So, how is high performance like cold showering? And I think from experience, there was a time when Wim Hof was doing his interview for Vice and he found out about it and it all seemed very amazing that someone can experience and go into that cold environment and it's now sort of exploding a little bit more isn't it now so this idea of cold showering uh, being good for you and what is it about high performance and cold showering that really uh, can has similar similarities what is high performance so what uh, high performance is the ability to recognize your limitations know how you work and do things anyway so as in a, in, a, in a nutshell and so I started to get into the cold showering around I was, I was going to summer events and all there was was a, a cold tap and um, to wash so got used to the idea of cold showers in the summer but what, what happens in, when it's colder and there's a lot of times when patients would say I couldn't I can't stand the cold there's no way I could do a cold shower and I would just open up the possibility of trying it out I said what well, what is it about it that stops you and and often it's the fear of um, danger or the threat that it's dangerous to get cold or feel cold and actually what Wim Hof says is it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't kill you and may slow some bodily processes down and it gets the nervous system sort of contracting and that gets the lymph flow going. So it's the comfort zone that's the important thing to remember here and that's, that's where that links with the high performance as well. So it's recognising your comfort zone where you might want to shy away from things like going live <laughs> and which happened to me just now and it's a, it's a natural process of feeling the, 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 the sort of anxiety of doing something that might potentially seem like a threat, but you actually get results afterwards. So, yes, so how, I mean, when I started to get into the cold showers, um, I realised one thing, one element is that when you put your finger in the cold water and just put your finger in your nervous system just gets instantly used to it and then you can move a hand in and then you move an arm in and then you then you and then but if, if you move if you move under the water it feels much colder than when you're staying still so in the same way if you do things for your performance to get results and it's scary um, you can do it a little bit at a time and notice that you get a result from it. And that's what I've been learning from doing lives, is that you reach people and it's, it's, it, it helps. So um, so that's, that's, one, that's one connection there. And obviously the cold showers you get you build up your tolerance to it and, and there was a point where I would walk uh, towards the shower going my, my, my body kind of wanted it but my mind was going what am I doing I don't want it and, it and you start to get into so once you get past a certain point you can see the benefits so much that your body kind of subconscious wants to do it but your mind's going I don't feel ready for it <laughs> so so yeah, just moving, moving. I did I did this yesterday, just 
thought, uh, or when I went to have a shower, um, I, I, I put, um, I was going to go for the warm, and then my, my hand just went for the cold. I was like, what am I doing? I'm going for cold. And then just got on with it, and then I feel amazing afterwards. So, um, it's hard to say where they're going live, or I feel amazing afterwards, but it's something where I can reach people. And it just takes that little bit of um, recognition of yourself to step through anything that you're worried about. And often these are just self-limiting beliefs. Hi, Debbie. <laughs> and um, so, so that's it, really. High performance and cold showers. It's worthwhile recognising, recognising your fears and just seeing whether it's something that is rational or irrational and that's how that's really how high performers actually manage to do so much stuff is because they recognize it and let it go and move on and now that's not so easy that's not so easy to do on your own especially if you've been used to it for so long in your life so working with someone is an ideal way so working with a high performance coach i have been i am working as a high performance coach and there, so studying this process has been very interesting for myself because I've been coaching myself. But I've realised that you can't ex you can't understand coaching unless you're experiencing coaching. Um, you can study it as much as you like, but then when you actually interact with a coach, you show up and you find out that you can you, you, you've got someone to go along with you in the journey and it takes time to develop skills to let go of things that are stopping you from achieving your best life and your best performance in life and that can be very simple things that you want to achieve or, or massive dreams or, or just a problem to get get sorted so um, all of these things it does take turning up with someone and experiencing it it's not something you can just describe to people. That's why there's so much information in the world. And lots of, this is really good for you, this is really good for you, but do, do we do it enough? Do we do it enough? Um, high performers potentially do because they recognise space and they recognise give, giving energy to themselves and actually stepping away from things to have the energy for the tasks rather than just trying to push, push, push all the time. So... That's my insights for today. And I'd love to know what you get out of this. Put it in the comments. And um, I'd love to help people. So um, I can mentor on self-management techniques and I can coach as well through these things. So let me know how you get on with this information. All right, have a good day.